as I'm going through this. So if you've got any questions, um, <laughs> ask them, but hopefully somebody can answer. Maybe not me. Duolingo. Duolingo is okay. All right, well, anyway, let's fire on with this. Uh, something I hate is um, Moodle. And Moodle, if you're not familiar with it, is um, a kind of learning platform. Uh, it's open source, so people can add things to it. And I might criticize Moodle one or two times in my presentation. So apologies mm -hmm. for any big fans of, uh, of Moodle. <coughs> okay, so that's the title here. I've put in that link, so just in case, my, my internet has been fine, but if I get cut off. I've recorded a presentation, a kind of rough one. I did it a couple of days ago that you can find at that link. There's also a survey on that link, which I might ask you again at the end to complete in your free time, just for a few uh, pieces of information gathering. Okay, so let's fire on. Is that working? There we go. All right, very briefly, because I know we've got a lot to get through. Uh, none of that is particularly important, except that uh, my interest in schema, uh, schemata, uh, which has developed through uh, having worked in law and then teaching English for law, uh, that I often find that students from different legal systems, legal backgrounds, have trouble linking concepts to what they already understand about the world. And that's going to be relevant a little bit when it comes to my talking about technology because I'm not a huge um, technophile, I guess we'd say. I'm not, I don't mind technology, but uh, I'm always a little bit suspicious of new things. That could be my age. So I'm mentioning that because uh, the two platforms I'm going to be talking about, uh, Teams and OneNote, they link a little bit to this idea of schemata and how, um, how easy they are to use. And a quick piece of background on why I'm talking about uh, OneNote and a little bit about Teams. Okay, that's pretty uh, self-explanatory. If I was American, I'd probably say it was awesome. Uh, I'm a big, big fan of OneNote and I've been using it just for myself for a couple of years. Uh, I was originally toying with Evernote, which is the, uh, the Apple kind of version. So it's sort of similar, but OneNote uh, works better for me. Uh, MS Teams, I'd say is an acquired taste. It's a taste I've kind of acquired, but I'm still, well, no, I wouldn't say ambivalent about it, but uh, it's, it's more difficult for me to use. And the main thing I'm interested in, uh, in with this presentation is about how you integrate directed, so basically teaching, uh, students and self-directed or more autonomous learning and how uh, OneNote uh, and Teams, but in, in particular OneNote, can help with that. Right, I wonder if I have a quick look at the chat here to see if there's anything important coming up. No? Okay, you've got the tutorial link. Uh, great. Okay. So a little overview. Um, I'll just let you read that for a second. <laughs> All right, now just a quick explanation of why I've done a couple of videos. There's a video first showing the OneNote desktop app uh, the camera doesn't work on my newer computer, uh, so I'm presenting this on an old Mac and it won't let me download the OneNote desktop app, which is very annoying. So that's why I've done a video of it. I would recommend if you're going to use OneNote to use the desktop app, it's much easier uh, to use. You can use it through the web as well, and we'll look at that shortly. But let's just go through a little video here. Now this is going to give you basically the, the key features of OneNote. So I'm going to be showing you just an example OneNote that you would set up just for yourself so that we can see what it is, what it basically functions like. Hmm. 
Oh, I wasn't patient enough there, was I? That's <laughs> pretty good toys. I managed to get about 10 minutes in there without any problems, and now we've got a problem. Let's try again. Hey, there it is. So here's a short video to highlight OneNote desktop app. We're just going to pause that for a second. Uh, you answer, are you still there? Yes, I am. Can, can the, is the audio audible on that? Yes, yes, um, I can hear well, I think. Yes, Yilnes, we hear you. Okay, good, good. Top program, just to call them programs in my day. So you would start with a new notebook. And you can see my locations for where I can share, sorry, where I can save uh, my notebook. So it'll be saved online. Uh, I can change, it, it's defaulted to my OneDrive personal, but I could, I could move that. Okay, I've, I've actually set one up for the purposes of this. I've set up Tester here. These are some of my own note, notebooks that I use on a regular basis. So these are personal things, nothing too sensitive there, hopefully. Uh, now, as you know, probably, because I've maybe mentioned this in my presentation, I'm quite interested in, in schemata and linking things to people's schemata. So what you'll maybe notice, or I maybe have mentioned this, that you can see, hopefully, a similarity with the old box file, box folder, that they've been called. So you... Just occurred to me, by the way, that it's also a bit like a file of facts. So any of the oldies out there, it's like a file of facts. Big boxes, and you get all the different colored sections within it. So you get red, orange, yellow, and you've got tabs within those. So it's kind of similar, uh, similar schema that we're tying into with, uh, with OneNote. So you can see there the tabs along the top, and within a tab section or colored section, so you name that section, so I'm going to call this OneNote, and I've got different um, different documents, let's call them, although that's maybe not the best word, uh, in the page, so each page, you can have as much media in a page as you want, but uh, you can have a big list there, and you can order those in any way you like as well. Okay, so what I want to show you is how to get things in to OneNote, we, we've kind of touched very briefly on where it saves things to, saves things as a, as a OneNote um, document. So those documents will look exactly the same as you're seeing here. So uh, how you get things into it, and I'm going to focus in particular on web pages, uh, things off your phone, and uh, Outlook material. By the way, I'll look later at how you get um, Word documents into OneNote, because that's what I use most often. Emails. So we'll look at those, and I'll finally mention something about how to set up uh, tasks so that it provides an alert. Okay, so getting items in into your OneNote, we'll start with Outlook. So here's my Outlook. Now, for data protection purposes, I've left this on my junk email folder. And Chris Goodwin, whoever he may be, writes to me frequently. So let's imagine that this is particularly an important email. Oh, I want to save that. Now, I've got a nasty habit of just putting a little flag on things that I need to refer to later. But what I'm increasingly doing is I'm exp exporting those to OneNote. If you can't see this on your OneNote, it should be... You can't see this on your Outlook, I should have said. So I would just go into my tester, decide where I want to put it. I've already done this in preparation, so you'll see. There it is, there's the email. Okay, so that just went in seamlessly. So uh, that's something that's quite handy for uh, saving your emails into your folder. The uh, next item I wanted to mention was um, web pages. So we go to my browser. And 
I found this earlier to demonstrate the box file style. So all I need to do with that is click on my clip to OneNote. And then I've got a choice of how I want to save the page. I tend to personally go for full page because it saves everything uh, that's there. You can change where it goes. You can change what you call it as well up here. So again, I've done that already. So let's see how that looks. There's a large box file, Yahoo image. And you'll see it's not just taken what's on the page, it's taken everything. And that's not a link to a page, although it does provide a link. That's a, like a copy. So even if that page was no longer available in the future, you'd still have your copy of it. Okay, your phone. Now this to me is one of the best features. So I can't show you how to do pictures from your phone, but what you need to do is use Office Lens. It's a free app that will go on. I've got an iPhone and I've got it on my iPhone. And Office Lens is, is like a scanner. You can do it just as, uh, to take photographs or you can scan something as a document and then you can send that to, uh, to OneNote. So that's a really useful feature. If you're in the shops to take a picture of something, you can save that directly to your OneNote. And then the other thing that I can show you what I've done with is an audio example. So you've got some text there. That text came from using OneNote on the phone. So again, I downloaded OneNote onto my iPhone, opened OneNote and went to one of the pages here. So I went to a page within the OneNote section and held down the, the little microphone at the bottom, which shows you an uh, option for auto transcription. And then what I additionally did was there's another microphone button you get on your, on your phone and I recorded an audio. So like a voice memo, basically. Uh, now my one doesn't play through my computer. I have no idea why, but I could open that through the default media player. Okay, that was an example of closed captions, auto transcription. This is an example of a recorded audio from my phone. And there we go. And the final item I wanted to show you in the, uh, the desktop app is how to set tasks. So we will go to there again. So I've got this. Oh, I need to finish my prep for the Wednesday webinar, the one you're watching now. So what I can do here, uh, the different ways to get to it, but go to home and then do it as an Outlook task. And I can set my whatever status I want for that. And then if I go to, because I've done that already, as you can see, I set the date and then if I go to my Outlook uh, for my tasks, which are down here. There it is, it appears there, finish prep for Wednesday webinar. And that will give me an alert uh, whenever that's due. Stop that as you hear my child crying in the background. That's on the, the recording. She's not crying right now. <laughs> it's a good thing. Okay, so that was just to show you the, the basic functionality of OneNote. So if you learn nothing from this presentation, you might think, oh, I could uh, use that as a, as a planner and a type of file of facts uh, to organize my things. And um, I, I tend to save things in folders and put them in, in OneNote. So it's really handy. And that's what the students need to know a little bit about as well, because they need to know these different options. One of the things I like most about it is, uh, unlike, say, Moodle, OneNote's something that integrates with the telephone. And as we know, people use their phones a lot these days. So let's now link this to what I was, was looking to do. And the origins of this was basically Around about October of last year, I was told that I would be uh, convening for our pre-sessional courses 
between March and June. So I, I'm sure most of you probably know what pre-sessional courses are, but those are intensive English courses for prospective, uh, mostly master's students, but could be undergraduate as well. And uh, the students uh, on those courses tend to have about 15 hours of contact time a week, which includes a 15 minute, 10 to 15 minute one-to-one -one tutorial or consultation. And so I got thinking, how are we gonna manage the consultations uh, next year, which is now this year. Now this was before COVID-19, so that's kind of irrelevant to this. Uh, and one of the things that went through my head was, well, they're quite demanding. I'm not sure how much students get from them. Could we scrap the tutorials? So I did a little survey uh, of language teachers. It was probably mostly English language teachers, but it didn't need to be. And I, I got, um, I think I got about 30 responses, so not brilliant, but decent little um, insight into what other tutors thought about it. That was, I sent that out through, through the Bali list. So some of them, some of the responses were from that, I presume. And just focusing on a couple of uh, features of responses. Okay, so you can see that the first item there is, do you value tutorials? Zero, no, seven, lots. And tutors valued them. So I thought, oh, well, I better not scrap them then. And the other thing I was asking about was, are they time consuming? And, and really I was meaning, can you get through what you need to get through in 10 to 15 minutes. Now that score was a little bit lower than I expected, but it's still, as you can see, it's more than half, isn't it? So uh, the other question I asked them was, what techniques do you have to make those tutorials more useful? And standard responses were, I get students to prepare questions in advance or to prepare something. And I thought, well, yeah, I do that actually. And 50% of my students never do it. So they turn up at the tutorial and I say, okay, so what are we talking about today? Uh, I don't know. So this was kind of the origin of my interest in trying to integrate some kind of directed and self-directed uh, learning. So I had already a kind of basic goal setting log. Now this is not exactly earth shattering, but I do have a reference at the end of my slides to something uh, where I kind of got these ideas, but as I say, it's not any, anything super um, unusual. You get the students to think about what their, um, their interests are for maybe for one week. What do you want to work on? Uh, any kind of difficulties and aims that they have for that period and maybe any kind of planning information such as how much time they're going to spend, when they're going to do it and any resources that they might want to use. And then finally, they're supposed to, at the end of that week, for example, do a little commentary and reflection and include in that some information about what they want the tutor to do. So that might include some questions. Now, I'm not sure if you can see at the bottom, there's a little um, link there to a wiki that I set up in January, which is still under development. And anybody who's watching this is welcome to to use that wiki and to add it. It's not, it's not got my name on it, so anybody's welcome to use it, which has some ideas on English language development. Okay, so that was the sort of origin of this. And then I thought, well, how do I get that log? And I was looking for some kind of portfolio type of software, and that's where OneNote came in, because this log can go into one of the pages of their OneNote notebook, and I can look at that. So we'll see how that works exactly in a second. But the other thing that we, I decided to do post COVID, so once the COVID situation arose, um, Yolanta in particular was instrumental in promoting Teams to everyone and Teams and OneNote integrate really well. So we're gonna have a little look at how that works first and then we'll look at the, um, the OneNote uh, student or class OneNote. So over the next, how much time we got? Maybe 10 or 15 minutes. We're gonna have a look through Teams.
Okay. So I'm just going to show you this live. I don't have to look at any of the chat here. Any, anything important? Uh, yes, there'll be a recording of the webinar, I believe. Um, anything else there? Okay, bit of chat, final facts, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, so let's just have a little look at Teams. Now, the problem with me doing a webinar here, it's the first one I've done, actually, is trying to make sure there's no sensitive data on my computer. So hopefully we're in the clear for this. I've set it up ready. <coughs> Excuse me. So you've got Microsoft Teams web version here, and there's a, an option when you open it up to create a team, which I clicked on, and then I'm on this page where I can create a team, and what I want to do is create a class team. So these are different sort of templates that work in slightly different ways. I've personally not used uh, this option. Create a class team. And let's do that. So we need to add some people. I'll just add myself. <coughs> I'm also a student. You can add me too, Neil, if you wish. What's that? You can add me as a student. Yeah, but that's me as a student because I am registered for a course at Glasgow University which gets me student discounts. So that is me as a student. I hope there's <laughs> another Neil Allison there. <clears throat> right, there we go. So that's what it looks like. And then you want to uh, create a class notebook, which we'll look at in a second. I'll just briefly say about Microsoft Teams. We were talking earlier about schema and how Filofax or Boxfile helped me understand the logic behind OneNote. But I struggled a little bit with Microsoft Teams because it looked a little bit like WhatsApp, which I use quite often as a chat program. But what I really had trouble with was channels because you can add channels. And I think my problem, or, or let, let me just talk about how I use this with students. I only created two channels, which was, uh, well, two additional channels. You get the general channel as default. And I guess channel is like a TV channel. I don't know, but that's how you communicate on a particular type of uh, theme, let's say. And all I did was because my group of eight students were in two project groups, I created an extra couple of channels, group A and group B, for them to communicate on their project. I told them to at me if they needed me to notice their chat. Otherwise I said, I'm not gonna really look at your chat at all. And anything that's for the whole class goes in the general one. Uh, the good thing about Teams, however, is that the search function is pretty decent. So you put a name of a person and a keyword that you remember them mentioning you can usually find, you get a list of results down the side. Okay, not sure I was going to say anything more about Teams. Class Notebook. Now I've set one up already, but just to give you this very briefly. You set up a OneNote Class Notebook and just for, the, for speed, I'm not going to go through that, but it's, it's fairly kind of intuitive. And then you get this is what I set up earlier. Oh, by the way, when you set up a new team, make sure you change the picture from the default one. Otherwise you get something really unhelpful. One other thing I've noticed with Teams, by the way, is if you give it the wrong name, scrap it and start again, because it creates a folder automatically on, well, it depends, it's probably on SharePoint or one, drive, depending on what type of team it is, and the folder's named after the first name you give the team. Now, if that's wrong, Yolanta will correct me when she does her presentation, but that's how I, I've understood it. Uh, so, yeah, get your name correct, choose a picture that's useful, and then set up your notebook.
and it's a little bit slow, I think, but hopefully we're going to see it in a second. Okay, there we go. So um, I don't like using it within the Microsoft team environment, but you can see some of the elements we looked at with OneNote earlier there. I would encourage you to open it in the browser, or if you've got the app, open it in the app. I've done a little video to show you how it looks in the app, which we'll look at in about one minute. Oh, I think I clicked on that by accident, actually. Let's scrap that. I don't have the app. Open in browser. There it is. So I'm going to show you a video of me looking at this within the um, within the desktop app. But just one thing I'll say is that. I don't know why, but um, in terms of schema, they've kept the schema of your kind of standard um, Microsoft programs with all the options up there, which now means that your tabs are vertical down the side instead of horizontal along the top. I'm sure you can cope with that, but it's momentarily disorientating. But there's the, uh, oh, the other thing that's maybe different is that you've got sections and then You've got, so you've got kind of, not, not sections, you've got kind of um, areas, let's call them, and then sections within those. So you've got a collaboration section, a content section, a teacher-only section, which is optional, you can set that up, uh, and then individual student sections. And that is private area. So that's like the student's own personal OneNote notebook. Only they, and you can see that it means they can't see each other's. So Olga can't see Neil's and Neil can't see Olga's. Okay, let's jump back to the uh, video. So we're going to look at this, how this looks in, in the app. All right, so one last little video uh, so that we can look at the desktop app again. Uh, so I've probably said this a few times, but desktop app is really the easiest thing to use and the most, it's got the most functionality. So we were looking at this one earlier. If we compare how it looks on our desktop app, so that's the personal, your own, your own OneNote to a class OneNote. It's, uh, it's similar, but you've got sort of macro sections and those have got the tabs within that. So you can create extra ones there, obviously. So that's in the collaboration space. Um, if I probably said this earlier, but less is more. So sometimes uh, I would say particularly for the collaboration space, you don't want too many sections because you want students to be able to find each other's work. So I would suggest just having the Various pages for each student and not having. Oh, I'll just pause on that because I didn't mention that earlier. So, what I used here was for the collaboration space, so that's where anybody can access any of the sections within that and the pages. I set up a page for each student, and a lot of the collaborative type work or any work that I want students to be able to see what others have done, a bit like if they were in a classroom and you said, have a look at your partner's work that I got them to put that all on a single page in the collaboration area. And sometimes I might say to them, okay, Neil, you're going to look at Olga's work and Olga's going to look at yours. And so they would know who their partner is. So that's us in the collaboration space. Um, if I probably said this earlier, but less is more. So sometimes uh, I would say, particularly for the collaboration space, you don't want too many sections because you want students to be able to find each other's work. So I would suggest just having the various pages for each student and not having uh, extra sections. Let's just delete those. 
content library, you could add some things there. I created a teacher own, only section, so I did that by going to the uh, manage notebooks option, it takes me to the web page and then I can create a teacher only section. What I did with my own class when I did this was I created that section and I had a list of all my students there and I also created a, a link so we just save it with Microsoft Word or anything else it's a insert link uh, you can put the location of a folder and that could be an online folder or in this case it's just on my uh, desktop so sometimes I want to save various pieces of work for them on a traditional folder so not just save it all in one note one reason for that is because we pass on records to other teachers once the course is finished and I think it's just easier to have those in traditional final form uh, rather than the automatic saved one note which will save um, Oh, if I haven't mentioned this, so if it's if you set it up through Teams, it's saved, it's saved on SharePoint, and if you set it up directly through OneNote, it's saved on your corporate OneDrive. So that's something that's a bit confusing for me, anyway. So I click my link, and I've done some feedback for uh, the lovely student Neil. If I can. <laughs> I can just find it on the desktop there. It's, it's down there. So I've got that uh, ready and I'm going to put that on their OneNote notebook to share with them, but I'm also going to say... Things happening off screen, uh, unfortunately, but I've got a file that I've done feedback for somebody, a, a standard Word file, and I'm dragging it into uh, their folder and also I'm going to drag it into OneNote. Uh, for future future teachers for my own record so I'm going to also put it in there. And there's the private areas for the students. So the student we've got a few different pages there so that feedback you can see I've already put it in. So I put it in their notebook and I've also put it into uh, an extra folder for my own record keeping. That's it, I think, in terms of getting things in. Uh, if I haven't mentioned this outside of the video, it's also sometimes worth doing something like that and getting students to do that as well when they put documents in. It's just there's a weird thing with OneNote that sometimes it truncates the name of the file so you can't see the full title. So that's something that maybe makes it a bit easier. Okay, so the last thing I wanted to say then using this was how do students get their work out because one of the words I think I used in my abstract is that this is sustainable and what I really meant about that is that unlike things such as Moodle, this can go with them because they don't need to be on a particular course or even studying at our institution to use OneNote. So if, they, if they've got a Microsoft account and it's easy enough to set one up, if they don't, uh, they can create their own personal notebook and then anything that's on this uh, they can move so then we're going to move that whole page and anything that's embedded in it so remember with the feedback here we've got some embedded document they can move that so they can move a copy and it'll come up with a list of all the notebooks that they've got and they can decide where they want to uh, move or copy it to So at the end of the course, you would want to say, okay, anything you want to keep, move it across to your, uh, to your own personal notebook. And I just discovered when I was playing with this that you can do it all at once. You know, the usual, hold the shift key down, highlight them all. They can move them. So really easy for them because they've got everything in that area, presumably, and then they can just shift it across. So that's it. So that's uh, that's what it looks like on the uh, on the desktop app.
OK, now I'm a bit concerned about time here, so I'm just going to speak for one more minute, I think. Assuming I can find my PPT here. Just to close off on that, so we've done all of this, the collaboration space, the personal space, which we were just this second looking at. Uh, and then just so just for a few seconds on impact. So you can measure impact in different ways, but I've looked at these five items, relevance, effectiveness, efficiency, impact on student and sustainability. Now, the only thing I don't have any evidence for so far is the impact on the student because I only really use this in, uh, in March and I'm not in touch with the students that I used it with. So I don't know whether they're still using it be interesting to know. Maybe I could email them and check actually. Uh, but in terms of relevance, yeah, it was exactly what I was looking for uh, to link up the whole portfolio idea. Uh, it, efficiency, 100% is much more efficient than trying to use uh, uh, Moodle for, for doing a lot of these things. Uh, and it, I know it's effective because I've used OneNote for two years for my own purposes. Uh, and sustainability, I mentioned, it's something they can keep with them and uh, so they can transfer everything really easily. That's it. Uh, that's a repeat of the link. Although I managed to stay online here, so you don't need to watch the video that's there. But there is the um, there is the uh, survey that you can do. Uh, you're welcome to. A couple of references, uh, mostly related to independent learning. And that's, Neil, that's would it. you mind answering? There is a question from Jackie. Quite interesting. Yes. If you look at the chat box. Um, is it possible to set up pages in OneNote for students to use for portfolio? Other students can view but not edit. Yeah, you, there's an option. Don't ask me to show you right now, Jackie, but there's an option to lock pages uh, that the student can do and that you can do. Um, so yeah, you can, but you need to, uh, if you would do a Google search for how do I lock pages and, and that would that would satisfy that, I hope. Is that helpful? Okay, um, Yolanta, I'm conscious obviously of eating into any of your time. Uh, I've only lost you 12 participants, I think, or maybe 15, <laughs> <so>. <laughs> that's not bad. <laughs> Although the rest of them might be sleeping, apart from Jackie and Jonathan. <laughs> Okay, so I'll, I'll hang about your lantern trying to help field any questions that you get and if you want to do your bit. Thank you. Thank you, Neil. Uh, can you stop sharing your screen so I can share yeah, yeah, mine? So. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Right. I'm just going to go to my first slide. No, it's not the first one. Oh. This is the first one. Um, right, so I'm just going to open the book, it will be easier to show. So, so this is my um, a short presentation um, on using Teams to facilitate learning and assignments and feedback. So uh, it's really, uh, I'm going to continue um, what Neil has been talking about uh, regarding Teams and what we can integrate uh, uh, when using Teams, what kind of applications and how we can use them in our um, in our in English classrooms, uh, whether we teach EAP, uh, EA, EA, EFL, or um, English in general. Um, so thank you again for for coming, for setting aside some time in your busy week to take part in this event. I know you've been very busy. Um, so what we what what am I what am I going to cover? What am, am I going to discuss today? Um, mostly how we can use uh, uh, Microsoft Teams to create, uh, uh, distribute, uh, discuss, share, and collect uh, collect assignments. And I'm going to uh, concentrate on. And the application called Assignments. Uh, the application is already inbuilt Microsoft Teams. Um, it's just to give you some ideas on how the Teams application can be used in your language classroom uh, for, in general, for managing assignments, regardless of the device you or your students use, um, because uh, we can access 
uh, teams in our telephones, um, tablets, iPads, uh, PCs, and so on. Um, so I'll try to take you on a journal of innovation by focusing not only on technology, uh, but on how we can engage our students in the coursework and provide effective and timely feedback in teams, because I do believe feedback is important. Uh, I believe you can use the application to inspire and engage your students. I'm in favor of teams, as, as uh, Neil already mentioned, uh, but also how, um, how you can um, um, collaborate as a, as a teacher with your students and communicate with them effectively in your classrooms. Uh, so, um, money-wise, <laughs> uh, it's free, uh, the application is free, which is good news, and um, I believe uh, so far I've been using this, it provides consistent experience across uh, different devices, systems, browsers, and so on. I've been talking to colleagues from uh, many different countries who are based in different places, um, uh, teaching uh, English uh, in China, uh, in uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, Europe, and many, many more, Australia even. So, uh, so far I've received good feedback um, about Teams, about uh, connectivity, uh, functionality. So uh, it's been quite, I think, um, quite a useful, quite a useful application indeed. Um, uh, so as you can see, you can obviously access this um, on many different devices. And that's a good news for students as well, because they do use different technologies, different um, devices, and they do enjoy using telephones, as Neil mentioned as well. So I think it's quite important. And it's also secure because it's Microsoft, so obviously they work very hard to make sure our data is encrypted. Uh, the, mm, it secures, obviously, uh, using various, various security measures as well. Okay. Uh, just, a, just a quotation. Uh, one of the main things um, in my classroom, in my approach, is to make sure students are engaged, always engaged. And it's not only in, in an EAP class. I've been teaching in many different um, education settings from primary to tertiary. So I know that uh, whether you have <laughs> uh, little learners or mature students, uh, you need to make sure that your students are engaged. And we cannot just simply use technologies to, uh, to provide that sort of um, uh, vehicle to deliver uh, a course, a task. I think technology should be sort of additional tools that would help uh, students to um, engage, but students should be in charge. They should be able to um, sort of um, manage their own coursework, uh, have a platform to think. Um, and I think Microsoft Teams sort of um, enables this. In the perfect classroom, every student um, has their own plan. I believe uh, every piece of content is really available and accessible to all. And this is the kind of classroom I would like to have. Assignments are in a perfect classroom. Assignments are delivered on time and, uh, and marked uh, on time as well. In Microsoft Teams, rainbows every day out of the window, unicorns grading the homework for you. That sort of thing you can see in Teams. As you can see, this is the unicorn that students may see when they submit their assignments. A bit childish, you may say, but quite rewarding for students. I know they quite enjoy that. Okay. Now, in terms of assessment, so what can we do when we decide to use Microsoft Teams uh, for assessment? Obviously, uh, we will be looking at formative and summative assessments. Uh, for formative assessment, uh, we can use uh, uh, discussion. Um, uh, uh, this is the main page, the general discussion page in Teams. And Neil was showing uh, how it looks like. And obviously, he was trying to post a message as well. So this is quite good for discussions to see you know, how students are getting on and um, trying to engage them in a, in a discussion. Uh, uh, 
to collaborate um, in uh, their groups. Uh, we can use obviously OneNote uh, and also Word Online, which is quite useful. Um, ask students to edit uh, a piece of text, uh, contribute uh, and uh, discuss something, um, follow instructions and so on. So options are endless. But I think one of the most challenging aspects of uh, remote learning environment is assessment. Uh, so how we assess our students' understanding of a unit when you cannot actually watch them while they take the test. Uh, that's something we, we have in class, but obviously we don't have it anymore because we are working remotely. Um, I think formative assessments can proceed as usual and using forms uh, in Teams, uh, which is an option as well I'm going to show later, uh, is a great way to see how students are doing with the content they are learning and also using uh, assignments uh, in Teams can uh, address this as well. For some, for some of the assessment, there's lots of things uh, within Microsoft we can use. As I uh, said, Word Online, PowerPoint with our voice recorded. Uh, we can use Flipgrid. I'm not sure how many of you are familiar, but it's a very useful tool uh, for students and teachers, but more, mainly for students because they can simply record a short video clips and uh, share uh, them on the Flipgrid site. And we can actually give them feedback. We can even uh, grade on their performance, which is quite useful. Uh, so that's uh, everything you can obviously get when using Teams. Uh, when creating an assignment remotely, uh, but not only remotely, we can uh, do it online as well. Uh, before students see us in class, we can announce an assignment on our uh, discussion forum in Teams. And I think uh, these types of uh, announcements we can do in Teams are a wonderful way to provide a visual reminder to students about upcoming assignments or even any activities we are planning to um, uh, to uh, to give them to do uh, for next week. Um, so you can obviously choose different colors. Uh, we can, you can color code your banner, uh, for example, blue for writing, red for speaking, and so on. Um, and you can organize them in a, a, a organized topics for the day, for example. Uh, in, um, in an asynchronous setting, you can use announcement to post the week's tasks, which is quite useful as well. Teachers can communicate the expectations for the week and offer students some guidance on when uh, they should complete the task, uh, which obviously is useful because students can then go back and read that message again and decide what they want to do with it. And also as a reminder, is quite good. Um, Another um, thing is uh, using the discussion uh, page on uh, Teams, uh, in Teams to uh, communicate uh, anything um, to tell students about the assignments. And these are actually are sent automatically by Teams. So when you create a new assignment and save it, uh, students get immediate message on the discussion page uh, about the assignment. And the good thing is you, they uh, may ask questions, um, asking for further instructions. You can uh, give them a little bit of guidance, reassurance. And I often do it uh, with my students, which is quite useful. I think it's good uh, when uh, we give that opportunity to our students so they can, um, they can discuss this. Um, uh, and it's also a sort of like a social, uh, I think, uh, thing uh, here uh, because they don't have the same opportunity they, uh, they normally have in class when they come to your desk and ask uh, about that particular assignment they, when they have further questions. But we can provide this online using the, uh, um, the discussion page, uh, which I think is quite useful. Um, so I'm going to show you in a second how this looks like in Teams because obviously it's a screenshot from the team I created for this presentation. Another thing is um, the, uh, the assignment application, what it can give us uh, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, what is capable of, um, is about storing really and sharing. Um, 
So the good thing is, uh, obviously, because it's within Microsoft and is, uh, is part of Office 365, uh, it's linked to uh, your OneDrive, it's linked to your share, the so-called shared library. So if once you create a file, and I think you already mentioned that, uh, it won't get lost because you will find this in the shared library, in your OneDrive, somewhere in a folder that is automatically created uh, by the software uh, for you because you've attached this to something or you open this uh, in, in Teams and sort of automatically, uh, you know, attach itself to your folder uh, in Teams. And you, obviously we can convert this to many different formats. Uh, one of them was Excel and uh, send it to administrators to whatever system you are using to share. Uh, making and tracking assignment. This is very useful. And that, that's why I like uh, assignments in Teams. Um, because um, one of the, I think, uh, when we're planning uh, our, our, our assignments, one of the most basic pieces of the puzzle that can complicate making it individual uh, is um, how how can we quick how can we how can we do it quickly? Uh, managing and tracking assignments that are different from student to student uh, can really uh, mean a huge amount of overhead, um, a time sink really. In class, teams teachers can uh, may uh, can personalize assignments to particular students, as you can see, or groups of students. So you can uh, create um, sort of group projects. You can assign work across different classes as well, not just one class. If you're teaching multiple sections of the same course, for example, uh, pre-sessional for many different groups, you can create one assignment and, and quickly sort of distribute uh, this assignment to different groups or even uh, individual students, which is quite, quite useful. Uh, and this is what I particularly like, this sort of workflow. Uh, the way it's organized uh, when using Teams. I mean, my workload as a teacher. Uh, so um, how do we share files and teaching materials? Obviously, it's very easy. Everything is in one place. When you use Microsoft Teams, you have folders, subfolders, discussions, assignments, OneNote, and so on. Uh, so it's really easy to, to keep everything in one place. Uh, make announcements, communicate, collaborate and then uh, assign tasks. So quickly decide who is doing what, uh, who are the groups, which student is in which group and uh, attaching appropriate files as well uh, to give them something um, meaningful to do. Uh, creating, distributing and grading quizzes. Again, everything is in one place and, and the final sort of stage would be to distribute, collect and grade assignments. Again, everything in one place. So I, I do like that sort of workflow. Uh, another useful feature is uh, the gradebook. So as you can see, uh, so this is a, a screenshot of one of the teams, not mine, but it is. Uh, so we have assignments here where you can see what your students have been submitting, working on and so on. But then when you click grades, uh, it opens a gradebook. And it's very useful because you can see the whole class and the points they scored, uh, uh, and what uh, whoever uh, didn't <laughs> uh, submitted their work, and I think it gives you a good uh, sort of overview, and uh, and it helps to uh, sort of address anything. So, for example, if a student uh, didn't receive um, kind of you know a, a good a good score. You can uh, even by clicking uh, email the student and send a message saying, you know, could you please redraft and resubmit your work or anything, which is quite good because um, it just saves your time and uh, enables you to quickly communicate with a student. And there are two things you can do in Teams. You can uh, um, create a rubric. Uh, you, you don't have to. You can assign points. You don't have to. You can use a, a description or whatever system you, uh, um, grading system you use. For example, for my class, I was using the 22 point scale and I was able to quickly create a rubric uh, with points, which was quite useful. Uh, a 
another useful uh, feature is integration of forms. I'm sure many of you have been using forms. Uh, it's another uh, application uh, included in Office 365. But instead of giving students a link to complete uh, a form, we can simply embed this. So by, uh, by, by choosing a, a team, sorry, by choosing a form that we uh, previously created for our class, uh, attaching that form to our assignment, I'm going to show you in a second, uh, students can now edit this within uh, the team uh, without going out and uh, going to a website uh, following the link, so which is quite uh, useful. Uh, so you can use this for assessment and self-assessment, and especially for self-assessment, I find it very useful, uh, especially if you uh, create a form, uh, if you create a quiz uh, with uh, choosing the right answer and um, adding points, uh, obviously form will give uh, a student an immediate uh, um, response. Um, so, um, yeah, so that kind of saves you time as well, and it supports the unlearning, uh, and I think it gives our students a glimpse into the thinking process as, as they work through the assignments, um, going, uh, following, um, doing question by question, and then looking at what didn't work well, we can give them feedback as well on that, which is quite useful. Uh, so. Form, forms integration, I think it's, it's the best part about forms, uh, sorry, about teams. And, and one of the best parts about forms is that it's available for students as well. So students, they can use uh, this application to, uh, for the research, for example, um, to create questionnaires, uh, to gather some data. Uh, so they can collect real life data for a school project. Uh, so that may be quite useful. They can create our quiz as well if they are asked to. Um, so, and of course, it's linked to many different applications such as Class Notebook, OneNote, Sway, and so on. Um, so that's something really uh, good to look at. And uh, if you are not familiar with forms, uh, what we can do with it, uh, we can do, we can use them in, in, in two sort of ways. We can, uh, for questionnaire surveys, uh, we use the, the, the normal form. For quizzes, uh, multiple choice test, uh, uh, we can use uh, the quiz. So we either create a form or create a quiz. And there's a text option as well to type in. Uh, students also uh, may be asked to rate. For example, we can add a video, ask them to watch and ask them to rate that video or for sort of um, tests uh, that <clears throat> uh, uh, are set up for a specific date and time, we can use this option, <clears throat> I'm sorry, as well. Um, so we can, again, we can use forms uh, for assessment and self-assessment. Um, for example, when students submit an assignment and have to complete a self-assessment in forms, it supports the learning and also gives um, as uh, um, kind of gives us records of what uh, our students have been doing and how, how they've been uh, performing so far, which I think is quite useful. Now you can see a uh, sort of a screenshot of one uh, uh, note. Uh, it's actually a class notebook, so that's something is already embedded. Uh, it's in Teams. And if you create, uh, as Neil was showing, a class team, you will see this sort of class notebook and you'll see your students and you can create sorts of different pages and sub pages, assign tasks um, for individual students, for groups and so on. So again, it's really a, it's your three ring binder, you may call it, to keep everything in one place. So not only space to collaborate, but also to sort of uh, uh, keep students' data, students' uh, work, and and uh, and also creating assignments because you can uh, you can uh, give them something to do or to work on. They can edit and they can obviously work individually. I use this for homework, very useful because I was able to uh, look at every student' work uh, and make comments 
and so give them sort of immediate feedback and that was very useful and students could co go back to that place anytime they wanted and make cha make changes read my notes read my comments so that was quite useful uh, I won't be talking much about notebook because Neil covered a lot uh, what else I would like to say uh, feedback feedback um, as I said before it's very important to me and um, and I think it's important to students we often in our classroom we offer we often talk about the importance of drafting and checking our work constantly in the classroom uh, in, in, in for example in my EAP classroom but what I see now I see that our digital experience we, we have and what we and what they offer us uh, those who obviously design those technologies, uh, invent those uh, tools, uh, it supports and tracks that cycle as well. And feedback becomes a meaningful part of interaction with students. And I see this in, in, my, in, my, in my, let's say, online classroom. And I do believe uh, students need feedback. And uh, if we use a, a, an appropriate technology where students are in charge, when, where students are, uh, have lots of different options to ask for feedback, to communicate with the teacher, I think that would reduce teaching a little bit, but give them something they need. Uh, so maybe less instruction, less sort of, you know, uh, teaching, but more uh, feedback uh, sort of personalized feedback, something they really need to know uh, in order to, to progress, to develop uh, their skills. Uh, so how I can uh, provide that feedback in Microsoft Teams? So when they submit uh, an assignment, I will make comments on that assignment page, whether it's um, in Word or whether it's something they attached. Uh, they can attach, for example, PowerPoint and they can present what they have done, adding images and text, and I can obviously comment on that. If it's a graded um, task, I can uh, obviously assign points as well. But having this, it's quite useful um, because they, they get that uh, immediately and I can always add more comments if they ask questions. I can go back to that uh, particular document and add more of simply answer the questions for them. Okay. Um, it really depends. If, it, if it's a formative as, uh, task, uh, we can obviously ask students to rework an assignment uh, and, and then submit again. It's possible in Teams um, and return again. Um, and when uh, I receive a submitted assignment, I can review uh, the assignment immediately and give feedback on that actual document. Um, so it really depends what kind of assignment we are looking for, um, but it, we, we can make uh, obviously uh, a decision. So this is a screenshot of an assignment I sent to my class. I created yesterday. I, wasn't, I couldn't use my real class I was teaching. I was in session of EAP uh, because I was uh, GDPR. <laughs> I couldn't uh, show what students were doing, but I did similar thing. So uh, basically uh, when students were asked to go home and uh, not, uh, uh, and don't, um, and they were asked, they were told the classes were obviously uh, canceled because of coronavirus. I had to quickly do something because I still had two weeks to teach and uh, I had to make sure that I that they were obviously prepared for the assessments. So um, I use Teams to uh, give them something that I want. I, I I believe it was important for them to do a formative task by attaching um, a text and asking them to uh, paraphrase a piece of text. Now, so the way students do this, they turn in, but if they feel like, oh, they forgot something or they would like to improve uh, their work based on my comments, um, they obviously, they can do it again, which I think is, is great for formative uh, assessment. Um, and I think, you know, um, that, opportunity to, to, that opportunity to rework an assignment and then resubmit 
um, this really uh, this loop supports authentic learning and personalized learning in every class. I think students should have that opportunity. Uh, okay. Yeah. So um, going to the next one. So that's how it looks like when we create a rubric. Uh, we can obviously decide to use points or simply. Uh, marking I was simply a, a description uh, with a name whether um, it's excellent good satisfactory or so we can change that and we can add comments so basically we can just copy and paste our descriptors that we have already in place if there's any points we can just add points here next to uh, the, the the name excellent for example uh, or grades uh, so we can do anything which is quite useful um, yeah, so that um, sort of helps us to uh, to see the grades and for the students to, to actually have the, the grades available uh, for them to see. So, um, so when students uh, submit the assignment, uh, I can either add a Word document and ask them to just type in and edit anytime they want, or they can attach their own Word document with their own uh, obviously text and I can still open this and add comments and and so on. So you can see uh, someone, a student submitted something, uh, a, a wee paraphrase and I added my comment and uh, my feedback here and there was no points. I'm just going to close this and go to Teams so I can actually show you what happened because that's probably more interesting. So this is my practice class, it's called EEP and as you, as you can see I'm not sure if you can see. I think you, you do, right? Can you see my teams? Yeah. Right. Um, okay. So you can see, so this is the assignment. Uh, it's easy to create. So basically you, cre you click create and you have an option, an assignment or quiz. Quiz, we are obviously talking about forms. When you click assignment, you can create, obviously you add a title to uh, the assignment. Uh, any instructions you can have, you can add a link as well. If there's a link to an external uh, website source, you can add resources straight from your library, uh, from your OneDrive, your, your, your notebook, a link or your file that you have stored somewhere in your machine. So what I did uh, in my class, uh, because the class was cancelled and session 9C could never happen, I really didn't have time to, to create anything. Obviously they used Moodle, but Moodle was used uh, mostly for assignments, discussions, extra, extra activities, because most of the, of the, uh, of the learning uh, was happening in class, so face to face. So what I did, I had that lesson in a Word document is somewhere here. And I simply attach this to this assignment. Uh, there was no rubric as such. Um, I, I could create, uh, basically you could add points. Um, you can change the name of, of, of the, uh, you can add description as well. Uh, you can add points if you wish. So if you have points, um, let's say excellent is, is five points and so on. Um, it's up to you how you're going to grade. And, um, and if you have finished, obviously you attach this. So it's a kind of random <laughs> quick uh, rubric, but you can actually attach a proper rub rubric convert. Um, now, then you decide who is going to uh, be uh, your uh, student to do the task. You can, uh, the two of uh, the names, these are my colleagues, they're not students who agreed to, uh, to use their names uh, to act as my students. So you can choose uh, which student you want to do the task, uh, but I simply decide all students should do this, so I'm just going to leave like that. Um, so we have almost everything. So basically the next thing you do, you assign. And what happened once this is done, so this is a task task, as you can see. You can edit this if you forgot to add something. 
and you see who actually submitted uh, the task, who viewed, who, who hasn't. And you can see the points if the points were somehow assigned. And uh, the way students see this uh, is something like that. So when they click on uh, that link, they'll see, oh, okay, there is, a, you see the notification is already there. So there is a task to do. Uh, I didn't add any instruction because I didn't have time, but when they open this, so this is what I basically, you know, added from my OneDrive as a, as a, it's, the kind of session that they were expected to do in class. This is really from the course book, as you can see. So it's not, it's, it hasn't been converted into a quiz or anything. Um, but what they can do, they can just edit this themselves and simply, you know, type the answer. The good thing is I will be able to see which student edited uh, which a document so I can give them feedback. So when I see the uh, obvious answers, I can adjust my comment and say, you know, wrong answer or well done or anything I need, I want them to see, uh, which is excellent. So basically uh, they can go back to this page and edit this as many times as they wish and it will be saved automatically and it will also stay in Teams uh, and will stay in my OneDrive. Um, I'm just going to show you the assignments I have already prepared. So there is a paraphrasing assignment. I was showing you the screenshot. Um, I can see one student handed it in, which is great. So when I go to that assignment, you see obviously this was a test. It was a teacher, so uh, it was not required to actually do the task. But one student actually was marked and it was me. So I acted as a student just for, just to show you. And when I click on that assignment, so this was my paraphrase, not a great one because instead of paraphrasing, I just, I really copied and pasted uh, what was in the original text and uh, make, made a few changes, changed a few words. That wasn't enough. So obviously the teacher was not very happy with that and gave me something, some comments uh, on what needs to be done to make it better. And that's good because, you know, uh, the student can go back to that draft, change, uh, look at the feedback, change, and uh, basically submit again, which is, is I think, great. Um, so this is one assignment, if I go back to, and uh, just to uh, show you again, Oh, sorry. If you edit this, you see that I've there are there are options here to uh, add an attachment. So, for example, if you have something in PDF, uh, that was actually um, uh, an article from a journal. So I've attached, but also you can uh, attach a link as well if you wish. If you have a, a direct link um, to that particular text, and you can download this. Instead, in in terms of how uh, students can edit this. You have an option to, sorry, because when you click, it's very interactive. Um, can be seen now. When you give it to when you when you uh, create an assignment, you need to decide whether you want students to edit the document online or not. Sometimes you don't want because uh, the document is your instruction. Uh, your instructions, but I uh, enabled this because I wanted uh, my students to edit the document, add the comments and answers and save. So that's what I did. Uh, another, another assignment I created was um, the forms. So I used form to uh, give students something to uh, to work on. So I created a form, um, a quiz really, uh, about uh, plagiarism. And uh, just don't need to go back. Oh, just keeps coming to class notebook. Um, so this plagiarism quiz, I just show you what students see. So again, it's in Teams, so they don't want to. Uh, they don't have to go outside uh, to uh, to do this quiz. So basically, I just added a few questions, multiple choice. Uh, and I've decided which answers are correct, which are not. So once this is done, obviously they submit um, and I will get, I will get the results. Um, so you can see who actually did it 
or not. Obviously not, but the hundred edensa I cannot mark because it's not visible yet. And as you can see, here is the grade book. Um, so it shows me who has done what, who still needs need to complete the work, uh, which again, you know, is easy because if that student, uh, for example, uh, hasn't returned something, I can sort of communicate with the student and even send them a screenshot of what needs to be done. I can export this to uh, uh, an Excel as well for my own needs. Now, uh, talking about assignments and communicating uh, your assignments with students, as I said, the moment you add an assignment, uh, a message uh, goes to the main, to the general page saying that an assignment has been added and then uh, students can start asking questions, what needs to be done, how to do this, so if any problems, everything can be addressed there, uh, letting you know that they've submitted and so on, the same about quiz. And as Neil mentioned, uh, we can create channels for different purposes. I've uh, created a few and uh, they're quite helpful for different topics for group work, uh, for something specific, for example, for seminar discussions. But I do believe that it's really good to have one channel uh, for more sort, sort of uh, social <laughs> interaction and uh, just for fun and where students can actually talk freely, can uh, talk about something else, the experience, you know, uh, how they're doing, uh, they can add pictures, they can add uh, uh, emojis and, and anything they want uh, because they really need to have a, a little bit of fun and they, they really need to have something that is more, um, it, it reminds them of real, uh, of, of, of a real classroom, the kind of environment they used to have. Um, so I think about Teams, um, that, that would be what I wanted to, to say. So it's really this application assignment that, is, that I find particularly useful for, um, uh, for creating, sharing, giving and collecting assignments uh, and having everything in one place. So um, things are not um, things are not lost, and obviously having grades here as well. So these are quite useful. Uh, going back to my slides, so I only have the last one, which is sort of kind of you know questions to sort of reflect. How can we use assignment features in Teams uh, in our classroom um, uh, about feedback? Um, what are we using currently to to give feedback and what and how quickly our students can receive feedback what kind of feedback and i believe it can save you time but obviously you would need to try and see whether this would work for you uh, i feel better organized as i said you know the, the most important thing is uh, my students were happy when i switched to teams uh, only because i had no choice and i, I wanted to continue our uh, sort of classroom experience remotely and uh, prepare them for the assessments and, and also stay in touch. Uh, teams were incredible because our students, um, they, uh, they continued, uh, they, they journey, they stayed in touch, they did the task, they enjoyed using their telephones, responding quickly to my messages and collaborating. Uh, something I couldn't see on Moodle because although Moodle is very useful, it, it's a bit delayed delayed uh, that, that kind of response and uh, it doesn't give you that sort of uh, immediate interaction <laughs> option and the tools uh, uh, we have in Teams are, are easy to use and students uh, sort of they can be in charge because they can add uh, questions, uh, they, can, they can communicate, share, collaborate, um, which I think it's it's, it's very useful. So they are more in control, I would say, even if I'm the instructor, students are in control and that's why I quite like that. So a couple of references that I used for this particular presentation. I'm not sure if we have time for any questions. Uh, perhaps uh, I haven't been looking at the chat. Um, I don't 